Hello everybody, good afternoon, Rose here. Today I am reacting to a series of community posts by Foodie Beauty. She has been very, very active on her community post. She just can't stop posting things on her community post. Right now she's doing a live where she is cleaning the villa, although I have peeked in. There's not a whole lot of cleaning going on. It's just her sitting and talking to the camera. Honestly, it doesn't look like a whole lot of activity to react to. So you all know that I love reading the comments on her live streams. And I like doing that because the comment sections are always more interesting and informative than her actual live streams. Plus, I think it's kind of cool to give the people a voice and let them be heard. Uh, because a lot of times the commenters have some very strong points that they express on what's going on with Foodie Beauty. So let me just go ahead and bring up the screen so you guys can see my other monitor. And there it is. So the series of posts that I'm covering today, uh, we're going to start with this one right here, Foodie Beauty. The simple message of I love you. Now, anybody that's reading that, if you're saying, well, that sounds like a personal message to Natter, you would be correct. That is a message to Natter. And I think she said that message to Natter on her community post versus, say, going on Facebook Messenger or talking on the phone and saying it. I think perhaps because of what she said on the panel the other day telling people that she and Natter were together and everybody caught it and a lot of reaction channels clipped it, posted it to Twitter, posted it to their reaction channels like me. I'm sure Natter was angry about that. Very, very, very angry. So maybe because he was angry, she was posting that message to appease him or to say, I love you, you know. So people had some things to say about that. Then another one I'm going to cover is this one here saying, okay, where should the first postcard be from? Followed up with uh, her raging about this one right here, which she posted four hours ago. And I can't linger too terribly long on any of the posts because there's a lot of comments on each of them. But let's start with the I love you post. I'm sure people had a lot of things to say about that. So the I love you post, Emily says, for anyone that hasn't seen her latest stream yet, she pretty much confirmed they're back together and trying to work it out. Absolutely disappointing and vile. You know, the word on the street and the feeling is the reason why she's not able to come forward and confirm that they're seeing each other is because of some kind of legal case. She even said herself, we're not legally allowed to be together. The feeling is if she admits that they're seeing each other or they see, meaning the, the legal authorities, if they see her with him on any of her streams, he could go back to jail. So because of that court case, they're not allowed to be seen together or else they'll both be in hot water, especially him. But she has been dropping hints, you know, saying little things to let people know. I mean, Foodie just can't keep her mouth shut. She talks about wanting privacy, and yet she's the one that makes it to where there is no privacy. She has, she has to talk about absolutely everything in her life. Allison says, how are you not disappointed in yourself, in your choices? When you've repeatedly handed support, how do you look at yourself long enough to even slap on fake eyelashes? I've been saying this for a minute. I'll say it again. Foodie's whole aura, if you will, her whole attitude uh, is, I give up. I quit. I'm no longer trying. She's not trying for anything. She's not trying to save her channel. She's not trying to preserve her health. She's not trying to preserve her income. She is just thrown up her hands and said, I quit. When I look at Foodie, when I watch Foodie, that's basically what's coming through my monitor is this person who has just 
given completely up and they don't want to make things better. Now, I've had a few comments in my comments section from people saying, stop giving foodie advice. She's not interested. Stop trying to help her. I would like to say in response to those individuals, I know that foodie is beyond help and I'm not trying to help her. Uh, I know from experience that when it comes to a person like foodie, it's useless to help a person who is not ready for help. Any words of wisdom, any sage advice is wasted on deaf ears because they're not listening. They don't want to listen until they're ready to listen. They're not going to hear you. They're not going to think about what you're saying. It doesn't matter if the reactors say something or her audience says something or her family until she reaches that point where she's sick and tired of being sick and tired. She's not going to change. You know, she's got to make the first move. She's got to get to that point where she's ready for the change and she actively seeks out people and resources to help with that change. You know, she's the only one that can make a difference. So as far as me trying to help Foodie, I'm not trying to help Foodie. I'm just a reactor. I can't help her life. I can't change her life. I'm just reacting to the comments. That's all. I'm just here to watch her videos and react to them and just put my thoughts out there and hope you guys are okay with that. But trust me, I am not trying to save Foodie. The only one that can save her is herself. Next comment. And I love this comment. MJK says, you're like the mistress who stays with the same married guy for 18 years who keeps believing he's going to leave his wife for you. Only in the end, after the divorce, he gets a woman half his age. It doesn't matter how much you love him. He will never publicly claim you. He is using you for his needs. And it's really nothing more than that. I love that comment. And that got 283 thumbs up. And you know what? I can see why. That was a fantastic comment, M uh, MJ. Really well done. Foodie is a selfish person. And I'm sure that where she is right now in her head, she's probably thinking, oh, if I just get more money or if I got rid of Pete's and the cats, then he'll want to be with me. No, Foodie, he won't. He absolutely won't. He's not going to claim you. You are not that woman that any man, Natter included, would want to claim. You are filthy. You are disgusting. You are vulgar. You are offensive. You have a bad attitude. You call yourself a boss bitch. But the first part of that statement is absolutely not true. The second part is. You know, the boss part is missing. So, you know, you you see that he's with Dee Dee. She's clean. She's hygienic. She takes a shower. He lives in a clean house. You badly want this man, but yet you will not configure yourself nor your environment to be appealing to him. But even if you had a bazillion housekeepers keeping everything spotless, he still wouldn't want you. He is He's not feeling you. He's not that into you, foodie. He's not. All he cares about is what you're carrying around in your purse, girl. He cares about that debit card. He cares about those credit cards. He cares about the cash. He cares about you buying him food and keeping the rent paid. As long as you're making even a nickel on YouTube, he wants that nickel in his own pocket. So keep hanging on to that dream that one day you and Natter will be together because it ain't going to happen. Even if you push away your family, your friends, Pete, the cats, he still wouldn't want you. He looks at you as vile and disgusting. Obviously, he does because you've been hanging out with him for months. And he's still making you pay to be with him. He's still making you pay. If he really, really liked you, would he make you pay? No. When you've got somebody in your life that you care about, you don't make them pay for companionship. Friendship, love, these are things that are freely given from the heart. And if he's making you pay, that means he ain't got those things for you. He really doesn't. Uh, Hair Slayer says, and we love that for you. 
You and Nat are together forever. You two deserve each other. Oh, yes, they do. I want Natter and Chantal to be together. I really do. I, I think they're a perfect match, even though they can't stand each other. I think they're soulmates. They are kindred spirits. And if for no other reason, they should be together because as long as they're together, they are not going to be around decent single people that both of them would wreck and ruin. So let those two evil scumbags be together, wreck each other up. That way they're staying away from decent folks that got their act together and don't need all the mess and headache those two carry with them. Random viewer says he doesn't care. Just keep the money flowing and he'll keep you around for a little while. Yep. As, lo as long as there's money in the picture, he'll be in the picture. He's going to act like a tick and attach himself to Foodie and suck as much blood off of her as possible until there's no more blood left in her corpse, then he'll jump off to another victim. That's what parasites do. They attach themselves to a host and, and suck them dry for as long as you know they can or until somebody removes them. It's interesting. Foodie has her channel and with her channel, she acts like a parasite because she sucks off the money and the resources of other people. And in turn, Natters is her parasite sucking off of her means of resources. So the parasite has a parasite of her own. The irony and the karma of that is just amazing. Lisa, take it or leave it says, when you have to remain high and numb for 90% of the time to remain in a non-relationship, it should tell you something. You are not living, you are existing, but hey, love that for you. So I remember all the live streams that Foodie did going over to Natter's place when he was in Gatineau. Every time she went over there, she would have to be stocked up in alcohol, substances, food. She always had to bring like sacrificial offerings to Club Natter because she would never be admitted for free. You know, like just here, I've got some groceries, let me in. Here, I've got some alcohol. Here, I've got some snow. Here, I've got some green and edibles always bringing something to his house. She never can just show up there alone without something and he would open the door. She's, going, she's always got to have that bait to throw out to him as a reason A, to go over there and B, for him to just open the door for her. Foodie, it's been several months. If you have to approach a guy with a bunch of stuff in your hand and money in hand in order for him to be around you, that should tell you everything you need to know. If you just can't show up and say, hey, let's go hang out. Let's uh, go have a walk, something. If you got to show up with money in hand, groceries in hand, alcohol in hand, substances in hand. If you have to have all of those things just to hang out with somebody, that points in the direction of they are not around you for you. They are around you for what you can give them. They have very little care for you. But as I said, I want you two scumbags to be together. You deserve one another. For all the hurt that you have given to your family, your friends, your pets, everybody, you both should be together. I really, really want that for the two of you. And if the two of you ever got together and got married, I would love that for you, girl. I would love it. Please make it happen. Let's have a wedding. Get married to Natter and the two of you can live in absolute misery for the rest of your lives. And make sure to put it on YouTube because that would be great content. We, we would appreciate it over here. Uh, Ashley Maserati Bugatti says, I would say here we go again, but we know it was never over in the first place, right? And all of you VIBs that you believe foodies crap about, oh, it's over. We're not seeing each other. You guys are either new to the game or you're stupid. Or maybe you want to believe her lies. Because all of us on this side, we see right through her. That's why she doesn't like us. Because we see right through her. We're not, we're not buying what she's trying to sell. We're not going to buy it for any price. We see how cheap and tawdry it is. But if you like foodie and you want to continue to go on being enablers, because you are, 
you know, you're supporting an addict and their addictions, that makes you enablers. Go for it. But we're not buying what she's trying to sell over here. Nope. Nope. Not, not, not at all. Number one fan says she's pretty much going to put him in jail if he doesn't be with her. Gross. Uh, following that up with the comment from Jack Douglas says, I wish I could sleep with him, but keep the charges on file. Foodie actually said that in one of her rages. She said that. I wish I could sleep with him, but keep the charges on file. So she wants to be able to be intimate with him but keep the charges on file because she wants something to hold over his head and following that up let me just bring this back to mind something else she said so when she did the pies and laws live stream where she was sitting on his bed wrapped in a sheet people asked her have you ever thought about if natter is going to find another sugar mama and leave you and she said, I think about it all the time. And then she said, I've got a plan. And then she leaned in close to the camera and said, I'm not as stupid as you guys think. Trust. Something about an Aries. That's an exact quote, by the way. So I feel, my opinion, that she already had a plan locked down that if you ever tried to ditch her, that she would use the fact that he's been in trouble with the law before against him. And then you guys saw what happened with her going to the police. So my feeling on that wasn't wrong, was it? Nah. Nah, because she's manipulative and she's evil and she's low down. And, and she won't hesitate to pull out all the stops if she can't have what she wants. Another comment that she made, she said she thought it would be hot for him to be in jail and be there for him when he got out. So those things together point at where her mind is. She wants to have her man all to herself. She wants to be able to control him. And all this trauma that we've seen these past months is because she can't control him, because she can't get her way. And yet she still tries because her ego just won't let her admit that she's already lost. Uma says, it really is Groundhog Day, isn't it? She can't stand her VIBs and has an attitude being accused of lying. Now it's 100% she's still seeing him. The I love you manipulation is now here. Well, she did say she was going to manipulate you. You really do deserve each other. Please give the cats to your mom. Release Pete into the wild and both of you move to the cabin in the woods. It's the life you deserve. Yeah, she did say she was going to manipulate her VIBs, and she's still doing it. Although I will say it makes me happy to see that some of you, them are waking up and they're not throwing the Super Chats around like they used to. Her Super Chats have gone down by a lot. I really wish Foodie would give the cats to her mom, a friend, somebody. If she can't be bothered to take care of them, let somebody else do it. As far as releasing Pete's back into the wild, considering the way that he treats BBJ, as far as I'm concerned, he can go live in a ditch and wallow around in the muck. I used to have some kind of sympathy for Pete's, not anymore, because he's just as vile and disgusting and lazy as Foodie. The man is fully capable of working. All he does is sit up in his room and do nothing. He can't even be bothered to clean the house or clean out a litter box, or put down a can of food. He's as vile and horrible as she is. So he can go live in a ditch too. You know, all I care about anymore are the, the state of those animals, those cats. Are they healthy? Are they okay? Pete and Chantal don't care about you. You don't deserve my care. You don't deserve anybody's care. You're both horrible people. But yeah, I hope that her and Natter shack up somewhere live their best miserable life. Yeah, go for it. Put it on YouTube. We need new content. <laughs> you know, let us see all of the fireworks. Sweet and Spicy Beauty says, we are all waiting for the, she will lose his everything art coming up very soon. You know, things are about to get real in the next couple of months. She's going to get a check in a couple of weeks. Yeah, things are about to get really, really real. Really real. 
and, and let's see how many edibles she buys and, and let's see how much paneer she gets. She won't be much, you know. <laughs> I think the greatest hell for foodie would be if she had to leave YouTube, go work a regular job for regular hours, have to deal with a boss telling her what to do. And she would have to live with the knowledge that she was on top of a mountain making lots of money and she threw it all away because she just didn't care enough. Just be sitting in the break room of some office with that day old office coffee, <laughs> smoking a cigarette, thinking I had it. And because I was lazy, I lost it. That would be the most crushing blow to that woman. <laughs> Uh, Harley says she admitted on panel yesterday with RSN that she's with Matter. RSN asked her if the main reason she thinks people crap on her, and she clearly said right now because of Natter, they don't like that I'm with him. That pretty much says it all. Just be freaking honest. Your VIBs would be much more apt to watch you if you were just honest. Yeah, they would. I mean, they would. They would probably still watch her. It's it's not the relationship so much. That people care about it's the lying the lying is so unnecessary let's just cut it all out you don't have to hide it from us booty we know what you're doing let's see uh the another one says she's waiting for may 17th to come so the legal mess will be over she won't show up for court or give testimony so they'll drop the charges then they can get married that's how she has it worked out in her mind well let's see if it works out in real life I, if there is a court case, if he is just buttering her up until then, once the court case gets dropped or settled or whatever, if he's not in jail or whatnot, he's going to drop her. He is. He's going to move on. I'm sure he's talking to other people right now. She's in for a rude, rude awakening. Let's see. Next comment. Let's see. I'm looking for a good one. Oh no, somebody's somebody is like parroting a foreigner song. Don't do that. <laughs> uh, there's a foreigner called a uh, foreigner song called I, "They Want to Know What Love Is." In my life, there's been heartbreak, heartburn, and pain. D dang curry paneer. I don't know if I can face it again. The, the traumatic muff diving can't stop now. I've traveled so far to Montreal to change this lonely life. <laughs> well done, Mr. Fox. Well done. Uh, Steve Phil on says Natter is dancing every night because he's got two women paying for everything now and will not go to jail. Yeah, he's having he's doing the happy dance. He's set. He's definitely said Natty Daddy's got two women paying for all his stuff. Uh, Helen Helen says, you were always together. Only time you raged was when he was busy and didn't want to be with you. That's why you brought over green and coffee to try and get back in, kept the views up. But now it's I'm with him again to get views back up because people got bored. It will be McDonald's rage soon. He used me, guys. You were right. Never again. I'm done with this time. Yeah, it's it's a never-ending, repeating Groundhog Day cycle. She's going to come to her VIBs. You were so right about him. He's a scumbag. Da-da-da-da-da. Yet, y'all, listen. You VIBs, if you're over here listening to this, she has said outright, I am addicted to this man. She said that. And if you have an addiction for a person, a place, a thing, a substance, if you don't get help with your addiction, you know what happens? You continue the addiction. You keep going back to it. You keep doing it. So if you have an addiction of some sort and you're not seeking help, it's going to keep going. So if Chantal tries to come to all of you and say, oh, it's over, don't believe her. Don't. She will never get away from Natter. Natter is literally the best she can do. There's no other prospects in the picture. No other guys that want to get serious with her. He is literally the best she can do. 
And the only reason why he's dealing with her is because she's paying him. Nobody else would tolerate Chantal the way she is. And she's not willing to change to be a better person. So Natter is essentially it. There's no other choices. That's why she won't let go of him. Because if she did, there'd be nobody else. There'd be no one else. So that's it for that community post, the uh, the I love you post. Let's move on to the next one. And let's see, oops, sorry. All right, the next one, man, sorry. Okay, this one I want to address. Foodie Beauty put up a poll saying, okay, where should the first postcard be from? Before I even look at the comments, I got something to say. So Fody Beauty is over there charging people, what is it, $10, $12, $15 for a stupid postcard? And the idea was that she would go to some exotic location and send postcards from there as part of her trip, charging people $12, $15 for like a dollar postcard. But here's Foodie making this poll and saying, where do you want a postcard from? Lachine, Orange Julep, Cornwall, Ottawa, Gatineau. So someplace local. She's going to send you a postcard from someplace local. And why is she doing that? Because she's not going to travel anytime soon. So all of you people that are paying for the postcard club, how cheated do you feel? How cheated do you feel really? The whole idea was that she was going to take monthly trips or semi-monthly trips and wherever she's at, get postcards there and send it back to y'all. Some of you have been paying for like two or three months already. You've already given her what, $30, $45? And what is she going to do? Going to send postcards from where she's at. That wasn't the idea behind the postcard club. It was you travel, you get the postcards where you are, you send them back to us. So this is Foodie just trying to take the cheap, lazy, thoughtless way out. And this is her way of saying, oh, I'll do something for you just so I can say I did something so nobody can complain. That's what this is. Just like she's talked about doing giveaways, her idea of doing giveaways is going to the dollar store and picking up some junk and sending it to y'all. She's not even going to put any thought into anything. So, Fody, you sending postcards from where you are, people were not paying for that. That wasn't the idea behind the postcard club. It was you going to exotic locations and sending a postcard. That's what the deal was. But you're wanting to send things locally. You're ripping people off. So let's move on to what the people are saying about this crap, because that's exactly what it is, is crap. Uh, Rainstorm says, well, it's Tuesday. Pick up Nads for his Wednesday meeting. Lachine would be easier. Let's see. Oh, here we go. And, and w this person's echoing what I just said. War says the idea was to send postcards from other countries that you visit. Not the next town over from yours. Fail. Love that for you, Koki. Yeah, it's, she's ripping people off, period. Ripping people off. Uh, people talking about Natter. Uh, Mary Helen says, it also requires you to actually mail them out since you haven't mailed Cuba gifts yet. That says a lot. People are crazy if they pay and expect anything. I know. She's got an OnlyFans that she posts a few pictures on. I mean, She's promised all kinds of content for OnlyFans, hasn't delivered. She got a gaming computer and told people she was going to do gaming content on there. That hasn't happened yet. So anybody that's paying for anything for Foodie, just understand that all you're going to get from Foodie are empty promises but no actual content. And it's up to you whether you want to keep paying or not. But she wants to get your money first. But don't count on her to be that person 
that she's going to go through with her word and give you something in return. She is a taker, not a giver. She'll take your money. She'll give you empty promises and not much more than that. So if you continue to pay your money, well, you're an idiot and a sucker, period. And see. So not a lot of comments about how much of a ripoff that is. So let's just keep going with that. All right. All right. So she, she and her moods in, in these, these posts were just like all over the place. One minute she's being nice. The next minute she's being nasty to people. Um, in this one, she was raging out saying, I love how people hurry to my channel every chance they get to tell me how bad of a person I am because of crickets. Because I don't want to tell you who I am screwing or where I am every minute of the day or for loving someone you think I should hate. But these same loving and caring and good individuals will leave comments like this. And here is the comment. And I will say, you know, I understand people being mad at Foodie. This was a little bit much. Uh, that was a little bit much. But what do the people have to say? The people got to say a lot. Taste My Rainbow says, you created this narrative for yourself. At the end of the day, YouTube doesn't matter. You can turn all of us off, and for what you do in your physical life is all dependent on you. You've done this to yourself. You have yourself to blame. Love that for you. Yeah, everything is within her control. Everything. Nobody can control Foodie. Nobody can tell her what to do. Nobody can tell her what choices to make. She can't blame the reaction channels. She can't blame her VIBs, the viewers, nothing. Foodie, this, this is you. You do you over here. We're just here to watch and comment. That's it. And if you don't like what the people have to say, either don't pay attention to it or start to change things to where you hear more positive things. In the midnight hour says, it's okay, big beastie. Natter still won't claim you no matter the amount of money you throw at him to buy him. So stay in your self-inflicted misery. Absolutely love that for you. Foodie likes to play victim. She likes to be the center of attention. She loves negative attention. Y'all think about this for a minute. If Foodie were just an ordinary person, if she were not super morbidly obese, if she took a shower, if she behaved like a normal person, if her house were decently clean, what would there be to talk about? What, what else is there to talk about with Foodie? She's not a creative person. She doesn't have any hobbies that she's mentioned. She doesn't have a social life, nothing. You take away the negative aspects that we've seen the last year and a half. What else is there? I don't think Foodie could ever be an ordinary person. I don't think that her super ego would allow it. She wants to be in the middle of the drama. She wants to create the drama. She always wants to be the, the eye of the storm, if you will. She doesn't want to let that go. And yet she doesn't understand. That's destroying herself and her channel at a rapid rate. Uh, Fiona Sutherland says, loving someone we think you should hate. What made people think that? Hours and hours of crying and wailing on the internet that you were scared of him. DV charges. You shouldn't have told everyone but a piece of crap he was, and then people wouldn't have formed that opinion. Right. She put that in motion. She set those wheels in motion, not any of us. She eagerly got on live stream, describing in detail everything he supposedly did. As someone I've been through DV, watching Foodie do everything she did, listening to everything she said, I can say with full confidence that I feel that about 95 to 99% of the things that she said he did, I don't believe. I think it was all exaggerated for drama, for money, for sympathy. Yeah, I'm saying it because I can't think of a single person who's been through DV that will ever get on YouTube and talk about it at length for hours, days on end with a bunch of strangers. That just seems like abnormal behavior. You know, the way she talked about it, it was almost like she was boasting about what happened. And the people that I know that have been through it, 
they have a hard time talking about it with just one person. So foodie, as someone I've been through it, I'm calling bullshit on you for all that and shame on you for monetizing essay and DV because those are things that should never been made into a story arc in the first place. There. Uh, let's see. Crazy Gabby says, the problem is people do not care whether or not you are hanging out with Natter. You do it secretly. And then at your convenience, when you need a venue to complain, you come out and share it all with everybody. Do you not see this? We all get the fact that it's your life channel and you can share what you want. What you are not seeing is how you are using people and sharing the information when it's convenient for you. If you plan on setting boundaries, then set them and be clear. Stop changing them for yourself. I think Foodie takes a great deal of pleasure in gaslighting people and keeping people on edge and making people concerned for her welfare. I really do. You know, she, her, her audience cannot relax. She won't let people just relax. It's always content that makes everybody on edge, angry, irritated. And I feel like the reason why she does that is because she's figured out in a twisted way, if she comes on YouTube and pokes at people, they'll send more money in the form of hate super chats. People will get so mad, they're not thinking straight, and they'll sit there and go, I don't like you, I don't like you, I don't like you. I'm going to make a super chat and yell at you. Here's five bucks. <laughs> make it make sense. Super chats are supposed to be positive things, positive reinforcement. When you're someone you're sending a negative super chat, what you're doing is, yes, I understand you're venting out your anger, but you are adding reinforcement to her bad behavior. Yes. Yes, you are. You're doing that. The more negative super chats she gets, the more negative she's going to act because she's, she's going to see how profitable it is. You're backing her up on the bad behavior. And if that's not what you want, then don't do it. But understand you are, your anger is being manipulated. She's poking at you to get so mad, you want to get in her face and scream. And since you can't, the only thing you can do is send a super chat because you know she's going to read them. But you know what? At the end of the day, the money all spends the same. And Foodie's the one laughing all the way to the bank. So Foodie's over there exploiting people's concern, their anger, uh, maybe the trauma they've been through in some form using trauma to bond in a negative way with her audience she exploits everything she has no morals no value she's all about that dollar bill chris kobab chris Cobabe says you said worse things in your cuba rage stream but keep playing the victim we love that for you i love that people are trolling her with that the i love you thing that i we love that for you thing Jeff Goldboob says, people tell you the reasons they think you are a bad person literally all the time. You just choose to ignore it. It's easier to be delusional and smoke away any thought if introspection than actually have to try and stop all your problematic behavior. You ask for examples, improve. When people give it, you just block them and say you don't owe anybody anything. But then turn around and expect those people to fund your terrible lifestyle. You're beyond help. Foodie's attitude is, look, I've got a YouTube channel and I am not going to talk to all you simple peasants that are coming here and you're not giving me five bucks. I'm going to put all of my conversation behind a paywall. So if you want to be on that side of the wall with me, you got to give me money. I don't care if you're coming to my channel and the big bulk of my income is the Google AdSense money and you're the one watching my videos and maybe you deserve to talk to me, it doesn't matter. I still want my five bucks per month and I'm going to get it or else I'm not going to talk to you. So if you're a VIB, even if you pay the $5, you still got to be on your best behavior because if you're a VIB, you're not allowed to have an opinion, not an opposing opinion, because if she's feeling in the right mood, she might block you. She's going to block you. So being a VIB does not mean she's going to cherish you more. It just means you were just that stupid to pay the $5 in the first place. She doesn't care about people. She doesn't care about her channel. She doesn't care about her VIBs. All she cares about is having a whole 
bunch of enablers to keep her habits going and to keep Natter around and keep him happy. What he says, in your words, he abused you, wouldn't let you leave, flicked a cigarette at you, punched you, screamed in your face or at you for hours, punched your dashboard, had another woman there as soon as you weren't around, spoke to women on the phone countless times while you were there, never stuck up for you, called you names, laughed and mocked you online. You have spent thousands on him, but he has never bought anything. He has no respect for your family. He hates Pete for all his faults, has been there for you. He makes he makes fun of him while you have sat there saying nothing because you didn't want him to kick off. The icing on the cake, he gave you an STI. But no one is allowed to say that they don't support you if you go back to him. You have cried on stream to your beezers over and over, but so you don't understand how they hate him. Oh, and he said he would he would unalive you before the cops turned up any more for any more. Yeah, she, she did everything she could do. She said all this stuff. She gave us this impression of Natter. And she wonders why people still don't like him. Just because you dirty delete a video, Chantal, doesn't mean you can delete all the memories of all the things you said to people. Sarcasm Loading says, for loving someone you think I should hate. Bro, you made us hate him. You told us about him. Sex essaying you. You told us to use paper clips if anything were to happen to you. You said he kidnapped you for days at a time. You said he burnt you with a cigarette and hit you until you saw stars. You did this so either fess up you lied about all the abuse you've endured or STF you and let us hate him because any abuser deserves hate. You know, she wants the best of both worlds. She, she wants to be able to have a certain section of her audience hate him. So she can go to those people and get those sympathy super chats. And then at the same time, she wants people to like him so she can be on his streams with him. She just, she can't stay in one lane. She's always swerving back and forth. There's so many comments here. Uh, Astronaut Cat says, from a casual bystander, what it all co comes down to is, your audience or Natter. Whether you think it's right or wrong, people are bored and sick of Natter. Choose wisely because without money, you're no use to Natter. You know, I can't speak for the entire audience. I think people are just sick of her lying and treating them like they're stupid. I honestly think that a great deal of her audience, they're so sick of the lies that if she just said, okay, look, here's the deal. I want to come clean. I'm seeing him. We're talking to each other. I'm still giving them money. Just put the truth out there. They would tolerate her. It's the constant lying that are driving people away, more so than the relationship. I mean, people might leave if she came forward and said, yeah, me and Natter, we're talking, blah, blah, blah. But it's the lies that are doing the most damage to her channel more than anything else. Let's see. There's so many comments here, and I don't want to t linger too terribly long. Let's go to this, the last comment. Okay, this, this, this one's a doozy. Y'all ready? This was posted four hours ago. Foodie says, hi, I have decided to do something meaningful with my Twitch channel. In the meantime, I'm going to commence sleep streams. I'm going to try it tonight and see how it goes. Now, I fart a lot, and I've been told I say weird things, so we will see. This should be interesting. So, Foodie is planning to do sleep streams on Twitch. Now, there have been a couple of streamers that have done sleep streams. I do remember one person. His name was Ice Poseidon. I think he was, I think maybe he was the first one to do it. He had a big channel, and he decided just for, you know, giggles to do a sleep stream where he put his channel on text to speech and people could play music and wake him up. And so he did a sleep stream and he made about five or six grand off of it. But I think I, if I'm not mistaken, that was the first person to do a sleep stream. So here's Foodie. She hasn't been on Twitch in forever and she doesn't have that big of an audience and she's planning on doing a sleep stream. 
Really, Fody? You're expecting people to pay to watch you sleep? Where exactly are you going to sleep? In that dirty, filthy bedroom with all the trash and the fruit flies? H how are you going to do it to where Pete's isn't up and awake all night long? How's that going to work? You were supposed to do gaming content on Twitch. You made people that promise. That's what they subbed up for. But all you did on Twitch so far is mukbangs, which which really isn't appropriate for Twitch, my opinion. But you promised people gaming content you haven't followed through yet. And now you're talking about sleep streams. That's going to be your content on Twitch? Really? Ugh. Yeah, so <laughs> she's not only does she expect to get on YouTube and get paid well to sit in front of her camera and stuff her face full of food and be in a filthy house at the same time. Now she's expecting to get on Twitch and make bank sleeping. Really? So what are the comments to this? I would I would I want to know. Uh, in the midnight hour says you're going to excel in this since you literally do nothing all day. Reach for the stars, Chantel. Yeah, like easiest stream ever. Just go to sleep. Uh, Tree Boy Illa says, I'm actually impressed at how you've managed to make a money putting less and less effort into your content. You know, part of that has to do with the hardcore members of her channel that have been there since the beginning they're hanging on by their fingernails hoping that she turns everything around they they've been with her for years and they just don't want to believe that the old chantal is not coming back the person that's now is forever going to get worse they but they just keep hanging on and i hope man they're hanging on for dear life uh, let's see Fellow human says, so you you want people to give you money to watch you sleep, and that's meaningful? What? Should be about the same as your live streams. Love that for you. <laughs> uh, Jessica says, this is so right up your alley. It requires no effort. Nope, no, it ain't. Oh, no. Jamie Reynolds. Oh, good comment. Jamie Reynolds says, watching you sleep will be no different than watching you awake. Yeah, just you know, practically comatose. Flora says, money grab, don't do it. She's trying to think of the laziest way she can make money, LOL. Why not sleep and make money? Heck no, that's a whole hard pass for me. Yeah, let's let's see how much money she makes on these stupid sleep streams. Let's see. Oh no. Oh, the roasting going on with this. EP says, I guess it's fitting that you're going to record your sleeping. You've been putting us to sleep for weeks now with your streams. <laughs> Maybe watching you sleep will be more entertaining. I figure it can't be any worse. It's all about the big bucks for minimal to no effort. I love that for you. Yeah, trust me, the reaction channels, we're going to keep an eye on that, see what's going on, see how people respond to that. Uh, Jay of Cornwall says, I commend you for your hard work and reaming your craft, Buffalo. Sleep streams are important between the grazing streams. <laughs> Goodness. Oh, the roasting has started. Oh, here we go. Dwight Danger says, sleep streams, quality content right there. Hopefully you will be wearing some clothing that covers all of your bits in your sleep if this becomes reality. Well, she's got to. Twitch does not put up with nudity or partial nudity. She better have some clothes on. She cannot sit there and sleep in front of her camera with just her underwear. Oh, no. They will take her channel. She better have some freaking clothes on. Keeping all that stuff covered up or she will get reported and she will wake up to her channel absolutely gone. <laughs> Sardox says, how is this different from your regular live streams when you're awake? Not much different. Let's see. Just everybody's against this whole sleep stream thing. Uh, Cassandra B says, how can I make more money without having to read the comments calling me out for my disgusting behavior? I know. I'll just close my eyes. 
Well, she kind of does that in a sense anyway, just she wants to do it literally now, physically. Uh, I'm pooping right now, says, need that rent money for Natter's new apartment, huh? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, Helen Helen says, even when Big Brother was 24-7, nobody but sad cases watched them sleeping. That's why they stopped the 24-hour streams. I've heard about that show, Big Brother. I haven't seen it forever. Uh, 3R says, the bar is literally in hell at this point, and you still can't reach it. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, Nap says, is this so we can contact help if you stop breathing in your sleep? Just lay the paneer on your chest, and when it stops moving, we'll know how now this, the end has come brilliant original riveting but i'll still watch it through reaction channels you know that that brings something to mind when chantal sleeps she has to use a cpap machine so is she going to be on twitch with the cpap on I, I hope so because without it you know something might happen while she's sleeping let's see Looking for another comment. Uh, 316 says, let's see if I have this right. You expect people, most of whom work, to stay up from 10 p.m. to 12 a.m. just to watch you sleep. And to think that you're going to make bank on this? Here's a suggestion that is right up your alley and you can make a sharp ton of money. Close down all your social media platforms, YouTube, Twitch, Snitch, whatever it's called, only fans and whatever channels and go straight to making bbw prom you'll be making bank uh, i don't know she would never make i have to say this i have to use a code word prom she would never be able to make bank on prom because that would require work and effort honestly that's why she's not done it yet you know it requires a degree of showing up and being on time and all this she could never do prom. Too much work for her. Uh, chick in lipstick says, tell me you're going broke without telling me you're going broke. Quality content, girl. She is going broke. And you know what? The check this month is going to suck. The check next month is going to suck even harder. I'm waiting for the raid streams, y'all. I'm here for those. She's going to get more and more unbalanced. That with the less money she gets, the less she can give now, or the less he's going to see her. Trust and believe that. Let's see. Oh, look at, there's just so many comments here, and I don't want to spend too terribly long the video is already out almost an hour but i want to catch up on all of her her comment sections in the comments just to give you you guys an idea of what the people are saying because the people have a right to be heard they got a right to speak their voices i mean this is a public platform so i hope you guys have enjoyed this react video and if you have please like it subscribe and leave a comment of your own thanks for watching and please have a very good day Bye bye